All right. Well, let's get this off. Uh, as LeBron James, Dylan, you get the first pick. A couple ways to go about this. Um, I'm just going to go the way of choosing the best player. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Kawhi. That's boring. <laughs> that is very boring. <laughs> yep. there, there's no follow-up. I, I, I there's it. no explanation. It's just, all right, he's the best player. We'll take him. Yeah, he's the best player. Like, what? I, I don't want him guarding LeBron. I'd like to see anyone try to guard him. Uh, so I'm going to take the incredibly boring strategy of choosing the best players. Fine. Be like- I'm going to take a, I guess, fairly obvious pick, and uh, I'm going to take Steph Curry. We've seen in, uh, you know, recent All-Star games that, uh, you know, threes do count more than twos, and defense is optional. So I'm going to go with uh, Steph Curry and hope he gives me, you know, 30 points in 20 minutes. That math does check out. Three is worth more than two. Hope that him and somebody on uh, Dylan's team get into a, uh, who was it, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dion Waiters uh, three-point <laughs> three contest during the middle of the All-Star game. Or the, that was the Rising Stars Challenge back in 2013 or 14. But, you know, hope that they, hope that uh, we just get some Jimmer range threes being dropped by Curry and, I think he has the better chance to hit successful ones than anyone that Dylan will take. I'd rather have Curry taking my threes rather than uh, Giannis. I don't want him taking any threes if I was the coach. Um, Just quickly before we go on, who do we think the actual first picks will be? Who do you imagine they'll actually take, Nate? So Giannis and Curry had a moment a few All-Star games ago where Curry fake laid down in front of Giannis. So I think that's a very realistic pick for Giannis. LeBron, I never have a good feeling for because I always think that LeBron would, would try to pick someone to tamper with. Like last year he picked AD. Giannis called him on tampering. Um, but there's not really that guy there this year. So maybe LeBron takes Luca first. Him and him and Luca kind of have a, a, a nice relationship. I don't think there's any chance LeBron takes Kawhi. Yeah, that's not happening. I don't I don't I don't think that's happening. I, th- I think he's just smart enough to know that he doesn't want Kawhi on the other team and that Kawhi is the best player. I think he can, um, you know, just like choosing Durant last year, I think he can sacrifice his own ego enough to satisfy his ego by winning. So I, I heard an interesting thing that he has always selected Kyrie Irving whenever he's been doing these drafts. So that might be something I'd watch out for. Um, it also just means he won't pick Curry. I, I think he could take Kyrie, but if he, I don't think he's taking Kyrie in the first round, that's for sure. If he does, that would be fantastic for Team Giannis. Yeah, I think just more abstractly, it would be interesting to see how, you know, these sort of interpersonal rivalries, whether they end up on different teams. So like LeBron and Kyrie or LeBron and Steph and Giannis and Harden, um, all these sorts of things. I hope that we get that convenient split um, where they have to go against each other. I want Harden locking down Giannis for the game winner again. You don't want defensive. You're not going with uh, James Harden for your defense there? No, if, if, if we just skip to my pick, I'm going to use my third overall pick um, and uh, complete my front court with Joel Embiid, who's been playing at a MVP level this year. Um, and I think is a guy who LeBron would like to play with. Yeah, well, uh, uh, LeBron is number one in MVP voting right now. Or not MVP voting, but in MVP odds, I should say. And Embiid is number two, and Giannis is number four. So I think it's fitting for me to take who is number three, and that's uh, Jokic. So I'm going to take Jokic with my fourth overall pick. All right. Now I need some guards, so I'm going to do the very LeBron thing and take Kyrie Irving. If it, now it this is a, this is really painful because if it was me, it would be a no thought. 100 percenter the odds would be minus 50,000 that I would be taking Brad Beal but I have to be smarter and uh so I will take Luca. and just for the listeners I believe it was announced that Tatum is the the replacement starter for Durant so Tatum is going to be our 10th starter yep and I'll let um Derek take Tatum as the final pick and I'll take his guy, real deal, Bradley Beal. That is all too unfortunate, but I will take Tatum with pride. And it's, it's all right. I, I really wanted Beal, though. So as things stand, we've got LeBron, Kawhi, and Bede, Kyrie, and Beal. Not much defense in that backcourt. Versus Giannis, Jokic, uh, Tatum, Luka, and Curry. <laughs> still questionable on the defensive side in that backcourt but how are you guys feeling about your starters it's an all-star game mate. yeah i was gonna say my uh my th- the theory that i i should have stuck my guns and passed on luca and taken beal 
I would have gotten Tatum either way, and Luka can definitely light up the scoreboard too. But, you know, last year we had 312 points. The year before that we had 342 points. The year before that we had 293. So defense is clearly uh, optional at this point. And my uh, my strategy going in was I, uh, optimally I would have had Curry and Beal in the backcourt and just hope they, you know, take 27 threes combined. So In the first well, half. Yeah, yeah, in the first half, yeah. Giannis will have two field goal attempts. He'll probably be 0 for 2. And, you know, Curry and uh, Beal would have 17 three-pointers on 29 attempts, just launching them. As soon as you take one step over half court, just throw it and see what happens. 248 uh, possessions per, uh, you know, a nice little pace. I mean, there's a chance you get a little bit of back and forth now with having Beal and Curry on the other side. You could get that shootout. You know, ad- adapt the NBA 2K seven seconds or less offense into about two and a half seconds or less. <laughs> Just dueling half court shots. Like when uh, I think it was Lamelo Ball, uh, like three four years ago, uh, maybe two years ago, had like a 90, 96 point game in high school or something. And it is just because he was never going to his defensive side of half court. He was literally just standing on the offensive side of half court the entire game. And his team would get the rebound. You know, the six foot ten center who's somehow fifteen years old would grab the rebound and just baseball throw it down to Lamelo. You know, I think that's that would be my strategy here. Would be you know. Beal and Kyrie are just good scorers. You know, you got Kawhi, LBJ, and Joel. There's no point in playing defense, so let's just send Giannis down there to uh, get the rebound or inbound the ball. Just leave everybody else up in the front court. You you joke about that. You joke about that strategy, but that um, was actually a suggestion um, made a couple years back by Vivek Ranadive. Um, he he, I'm pretty positive it was him. Had had suggested the idea with of of playing defense four on five and having one guy um, at the other end of the court at all times as, as just guaranteed buckets. You want to know where he got it? Yeah, it was Vivek. He got it from coaching his girls' sixth grade basketball team because they employed a cherry picking <laughs> strategy and they won some sixth grade girls' championship. And so he's like, this will, of course, translate the NBA. Yeah, the correlation there is just, I'm sure the R-squared value on that correlation is very close to one. Yeah, that that just sums up everything you need to know about owner's decision making, um, that it's just all personal, anecdotal, weird stuff. Like, this worked for my daughter's sixth grade team, this will work for us. I went to this college, he'll be good for us. Hey, just in case things don't work out with Luke Walton, because they're not working out with Luke Walton, you got Vivek, who could become the first owner coach. Yeah, that would go over great. Hey, I sign your paychecks. Do what I say. Runs play. Oh, yeah, exactly. I own this team, I and therefore I own you. And then, then, then he would be the next Donald Sterling. I was going to make a joke like, hey, Bagley, stop playing defense, but there's no one on that team that plays defense that he can yell at anyway. They already kind of employ that strategy. Yeah, they kind of just mail it in on the defensive end. Anyway, enough Kings hate. Let's get to um forcing me to select a undeserving All Star. Yeah, you get the uh, the first pick of the bench reserves. Actually, no, Giannis Giannis gets the first pick of the reserves. I was just gonna say, don't I get to go first here? Yep. Well, if I was drafting a fun team, I'd probably draft Zion and just try to throw him lobs all game. Um, but I've been on his. I've been a fan of his for years and gotten a lot of hate for it. Uh, you know, his stat padding and all this stuff. And it's, I'm actually not talking about Westbrook this time. I'm going to take James Harden. Hmm. I thought you were about to go for Zach Levine on us. <laughs> no comment from there. Um, that pick kills me for two reasons. One, I really wanted Harden. And also, I've wanted Harden against Giannis. So uh, that, that doubly kills me. But as I was saying, thinking about my closing five... I don't really want Bradley Beal out there. Um, he's not quite on that caliber of player, so I'm going to get the trusty hand of Chris Paul as my first pick off the bench to um, close out my starting five, my finishing really? five, my closing five. Really? I expected you to go Paul George there. I was like, he's just sitting right there for you. Yeah, with already having LeBron, Kawhi, and Bead, um, I don't really know if he'll be closing, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I've got a, a position of need at closing guard, and Chris Paul's one of the best closers in the game. Um, and we saw him close last year, um, and, and so I have, I have faith in him there. So I'll, I'll use my first pick on LeBron's good friend Chris Paul. All right, that's fine by me because uh, I will also be taking a closing guard, uh, even though I already have three uh, guards if you count Luca as a guard. But um, when I think of closing guard in an All Star game, I think of just a guy who will 
almost assuredly get me three points, whether it's from 40 feet behind the line and uh, hoping that you take Paul George and Paul George has to guard him, as we've seen before, <laughs> I will take Damian Lillard. Yeah, I, I knew that was going to be your pick so much, I typed it in before you even... <laughs> yeah, you, yeah you, yep. Had finished. Um, now it gets a little bit tricky. Remember, you guys can always select uh, one of the guys that was not selected. So there's still Chris Middleton sitting out there. There's Bam out of bio. There's, there's Mike Conley, the other subs, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy G buckets. Trey Young, right. if I want to continue my offense, no defense play. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll just go back to my strategy of picking the best player available. So I'll grab Paul George. I was going to try to drill in and ask if you really do believe Paul George is the best guy out there, but I don't know who I would offer is better than him. Maybe Donovan Chol? Uh, I, th- I think the only argument is uh, a guy that I don't want to give away because I want to grab him soon. So I- I'll tell you about it when we get there. Okay. I'm going to go down the board here a little bit. I don't think this is what will happen in real life. I don't think this guy will be, uh, the, you know, one of the first, it's the 15th guy, well, 13th guy taken. But uh, I'm looking at my team, and I think my average height right now is somewhere around 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and I see that Dylan has uh, LeBron, Kawhi, and Joel. So that could be problematic. Jokic is not the best uh, big man defender. And neither is this guy in terms of big man defenders. I'd say, you know, I'd probably go Gobert if I really wanted that. But I'm going to go all the way down the board and take Nikola Vucevic. I do love some Vu. I love me some Vucevic. I was very happy to see him having a great year this year and also being a... Uh, all-star if somebody like bam out of bio got in instead i would have been very upset all right i'm gonna go um continue to be big and versatile um and take the young king the fresh prince ben simmons yeah i had crossed that before uh once you once you said the word versatile and big i was like okay yep that's great his team gets taller my team gets shorter it's also just a lebron move you know he, he's been simmons most of the years they're both clutch guys you know, yep. makes sense. Just wait till I bring KCP in with my um wild card selection. No, you should bring in uh, J.R. Smith. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing J.R. Bring in the main man, J.R. Smith. Nobody's better at taking those 75-foot buzzer beaters than J.R. Smith. Or taking the two-foot buzzer beater and running out 40 feet and just not shooting it. Yeah, you know, and just, oh, it's, it's it, we're, oh, I need to take, I need to shoot the ball. This is basketball. I need to shoot. Oops. Yeah, buzzer buzzer beater and Jr. They just uh, don't seem to go together in my mind. He's more of a buzzer loser. I'd like to see him back on the floor taking some threes, so he can do the uh, the 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 windmill, and then there's the uh, best celebration of all time when he was with the Knicks back in the day. All right. Well, let's see. What does my team? Hmm. I'm going to go with Jalen Brown. Maybe some familiarity having played uh, with uh, Jason Tatum. You know, if we get both of them on the floor, they can have a little, you know, uh, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry-esque uh, Splash Bros type moment. Maybe they can get out there and uh, use their team chemistry and help my team not lose by 40 points. Yeah, and Brown might even close for you with um, me having the option of playing either two or three elite big wings. Um, you don't really have anyone to defend that, so Brown might be even even a closer. Yep. I mean, you could play four large wings if you put Simmons at point. Uh, Simmons, LeBron, backcourt with Kawhi, Paul George, and then Embiid out there. Yeah, I was looking at the board in terms of uh, wing players, and uh, I did not want to get to the point where I had to have to trust someone like Zach Levine. So I uh, figured I'd go out and get Jalen Brown while I can. All right, so this was the guy I was talking about earlier, Nate, as the one player that on the reserves that I think has the best argument of being better than Paul George. Wait, Rudy Gobert? You got it. Yeah. Perpetually yeah. underrated Rudy Gobert. Criminally underrated. Yeah, seeing people make arguments for Donovan Mitchell as MVP is just like big Derrick Rose vibes of you You reward the best offensive player for a, a great defensive team. Um, although they are a good offense as well. Um, but I think Gobi is the best player on that team. The Donovan Mitchell for MVP thing just... Uh, who who was it that said that? Paul Pierce, I think? He had his yeah. top three. Some, yeah. some some idiot former player analyst. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that could be Paul Pierce. That could be Jill and Rose. That could be a lot of guys. But uh, Kendrick Perkins. In, in terms... Oh, geez, yeah. Oh, Twitter beef, man. Uh, in terms of MVP voting or MVP odds, uh, 
Donovan Mitchell's not even in the top 10. So I think that's just an absolutely way out there, get people to click on this link and get some uh, page views type pick. Exactly the type of, type of stuff we should be running so that we can uh, really boost our numbers. The, this, the, 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 the Skip Bayless method, just say say something ridiculous. Put in the podcast title, um, All-Star Draft and Donovan Mitchell mvp talk and then if people will listen and they'll be like oh they're just they're just shitting on donovan mitchell okay <laughs> yeah. cool that's what, that's that's what i was hoping right who's your uh I, interesting we still have three players from the west and three players from the east i kind of was expecting uh, a little bit more lopsided picking but you guys have been pretty even going west east or east west yeah real quick one thing that i've noticed is it's it's a very good thing that um they're not just going west east because i think the west is would absolutely destroy the east oh yeah um especially as you get deeper especially as you get deeper into the bench yeah well it is the all-star game and as we've seen in years past uh like i've said before defense is optional and highlight plays almost always happen so uh i will take the high flying very exciting to watch zion williamson and hope he does some you know ridiculous 360 slam dunks and breaks the backboard or something but it almost feels like in years past or when you watch the all-star game uh there are moments where teams will the players will specifically not play defense like we'll just give up on the play because they know that the player they just let blow by them is going to go up and do like absolutely throw it down so I'm hoping that Zion has some of those moments. Like, you know, fast break, Zion just starts running down the court, cherry picking, and no one even chases him. And he goes down and, hey, I'll take two points with 100% efficiency. Yeah, teams almost do that to him now, just like see him start to drive and just get out the way. Yep. So so to you know, amplify that to an all-star level, we'll see some cool stuff. Yeah, no one's going to take a charge. That's not happening. No, no, no. No one is. No one's getting in the paint and taking a charge in the All Star game. That will definitely not be a thing. Yeah, Kyle Lowry's not on the team this year. But he could be in this draft. He could be. Um, uh, for now, I'm going to add. A, I've I've got a pretty good defensive team. I think with Simmons and Gobert and Kawhi and Bede, um, PG and LeBron. So I'm going to get a a scorer. Please do it. Um, to pair with his backcourt mate Chris Paul, I'm going to take Devin Booker. Oh, Injury really? replacement. I had already moved Donovan Mitchell over to your side. Well, you can yeah, move that's... him back over to my side because that's my pick. <laughs> yeah. Because I want absolutely no part of uh, two of the guys left on here. So Wait, I just got to ask. Would you have both chosen Booker over Mitchell? Or what's the debate here? Uh, I was hoping he would take Zach Levine. Naturally. But Dylan and I have very similar uh, viewpoints on Zach Levine. So uh, that was... You know, a, a false hope well, like my wizard's dreams of being successful but uh i probably would have taken booker purely out of bias for having lived in phoenix what was your uh deciding factor there um obviously those guys are pretty close but i think booker is a slightly better player and um i want to run him with chris paul i think devin booker is like a, a future all-star mvp uh it's just a guy who will get hot one day and light it up um i think he has a little bit more um volatility i guess than mitchell but they are very close okay well who are you going with with your uh, next pick then now here's where it gets tough i'm looking at these remaining guys and and this is sort of where the um where the argument for a deeper all-star team kind of falls apart that once you get 10 guys in um the drop off from 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 there to the next guys is is pretty significant uh, so maybe i'll pull someone in oh, God. I'm going to get one more bench creator um, looking at my roster, maybe lacking a little bit of on-ball creation. So I'm going to pull in from the snub list, the biggest all-star snub, in my opinion, Trey Young. I like it. That's, that's why I wanted to offer you guys up the snub list to just re-snub some of the selected all-stars. So just so the listeners are aware, we're selecting Trey Young before Randall, before Levine, and before the Disney Prince Sabonis. So, Nate, for clarification, are we just leaving two of the actual All-Stars off our team, or are we just adding one extra player to our team? I don't think we need adding one extra. I, th- I think it's going to come down to uh, Dylan's going to get stuck with Zach Levine, so uh, I'm fine with keeping them on. Okay. In that case, I'm going to go with uh, DeMontis Sabonis. Sabonis started the year so, so strong and fell off. I know his recent stats have been been good of late i think it was 24 11 and 7 past two weeks but yeah sabonis really need another offensive weapon because he 
his best attribute is his passing. He's a good rebounder. He's a good scorer. But losing Oladipo has really tanked him. Oh, he's got uh, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven players around him. Uh, so. <laughs> In the All-Star game, I think he can. I, th- I think he'll be a valuable part of my team. Plus, looking at my team, the tallest guy, the second tallest guy on my bench up until this point is six six. So I figured uh, a little bit more height wouldn't hurt. Do you think Vucevic just breaks down and cries when he starts playing this game? Like I can, these are guards. I, I'm playing with an actual point guard. I'm playing with Dame Lillard and Steph Curry. This is so magical. If I set a screen, someone will actually create an offensive opportunity. I don't have to create everything myself. Someone will pass me the ball and it, with, a, with a scoring opportunity. Well, who is it down there with him? Is it um, Terrence Ross off the bench? Yep, Terrence Ross. A, a tremendous um, passing player. I, oh, yeah, he's he's a, he's absolutely lethal in the uh, passing game. His playmaking is an A-plus if, if we were playing 2K. He's out of control. I'm sure he's got all the... Uh, all the uh, uh, Galaxy badges when it comes to playmaking. Well, they've been starting Al Farouk Aminu and James Ennis next to oh. him. Yeah. Mm. Michael Carter-Williams is their uh-huh. star point guard. It's uh, It's been truly miserable in Orlando. After a really fun start with Fultz. Yeah, I can't imagine Vucevic is having very much fun. Uh, the only, I'm sure one of the only positives that he looks at is that uh, the state of Florida has no income tax. Um, so I'm sure he's happy about that. If he was in a more miserable place to be alive, like, I don't know, Minnesota, he'd probably just retire on the spot. Yeah. Hey, he's, um, I'm, I'm sure Ainge will be tuning in um, and watching very closely, having Vucevic playing with Brown and Tatum. Um, I think that's where Vooch would like to be. I don't know. They just came out and had a press conference and kind of kind of said they're not really going to use that trade exception. And Boston's uh, not a contender, according to Danny Ainge. And everyone it's else. It's a very Ainge move to, to have this massive trade exception and not use it. All right, let's take a break real quick. This is really just to prepare myself for having to take Zach Levine. I need to emotionally prepare. <laughs> yeah, you need to go take a break. Well, I do believe it is your pick, Mr. Williamson, with a few members uh, left on the board. Yeah, so who am I missing? Do you want to run down the options, Zach? Yeah, you have two options. Julius Randle or Zach Levine? I've, oh, right, because I've picked an extra guy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't matter who you pick because you're getting both of them. That's true. It <laughs> actually doesn't matter who you pick because you're getting right. both of them. Then I'll pick both Julius Randle and Zach you'll Levine. T- you'll whoa, you'll whoa, take whoa. Julius Randle first, though. You'll take Julius Randle first, though. Make sure Zach Levine's the last pick. Yeah, yeah. we got to know who's in that finals spot. Mystery, irre- mystery irrelevant. Last spot in the draft, draft number 60. All right. I'm going to shock you all and take Zach Levine instead of Randle. Um, I think Levine is an undeserving all-star, but I think Randall is even worse. It's a little bit tough because I kind of wanted to go with a bigger guy. My team's a little bit small. It's got a lot of scoring wings um, as it ended up. Yeah, Maybe I should have brought in a, a defensive player. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty... Wait, wait a minute, you got yeah, Simmons, Simmons and Gobert. You don't need defense. Yeah. But I've also got Booker, Young, Levine, Irving, and Beal. Like if you want a five-man offense, chuckers no passing um there's a unit for you um but let me just say with, with all of the all of the hate that i've been throwing to zach levine i don't think he's a bad player um i just think he is unqualified for the role that he's been given i think as a as a, a third guy on a on a good team who can who can just focus on getting buckets uh he could be a really good player and that's what he's going to be on this team you know i'm gonna uh, we can run him with, with Kyrie or with Chris Paul or with LeBron with a point guard that can create for him and he can just focus on, on scoring. And and so I think he's actually not a bad player in this format. Um, he's just asked to do more than what he's capable of. Um, and so for the first time in years, I'm going to say some nice things about Zach Levine and, and not take him with my last pick. I'll take him with the second to last pick um, in, in honor of Levine. Well then, what? Uh, who is going to be your last? I am between three players, two who absolutely deserve to be in the All-Star game and one who I don't think was talked about literally at all for the All-Star game. But I think in this format, I think he would provide uh, fantastic value to the team considering that uh, looking at Dylan's team, they will be taking a lot of shots and uh, 
at probably a decent rate considering they're all stars. But you know, I'm seeing a lot of three pointers, and uh, you know, around forty percent, thirty nine percent, thirty eight percent. You're talking a lot of misses. So it's tempting to take my boy. I've been a big fan of his since he was in Houston. It's real tempting to take Quinn Capella. Not gonna lie, number one in the league in rebounds, number four in the league in blocks. Uh, really tempting to take him because as a uh, Beal and Kyrie and uh, especially Paul George, Devin Booker, Trey Young, as those guys just launch threes all day, you know, I could, you know, I think Capella could put up 15 and 15 in about 15 minutes, just stick him under the basket and just have him grab all the rebounds. You already have like, f- like three centers. Yeah, that feels like a, a incredibly inefficient use of uh, my pick, so... I guess that was just me giving some giving Clint Capella a little bit of airtime. Shout out, Capella. Um, so I'm. It's between Bam and Butler for me. I like Bam personally more than Jimmy Butler, but with Giannis and Jokic and Vucevic and Zion and Sabonis, uh, I'm gonna go with Jimmy Butler. I think the difference that he makes in Miami uh, when he was out versus when he's back has been. Uh, really telling of just how valuable a player he is. Plus, I'd love to see he's uh definitely got a little bit of personality to him, and I'd love to see like him and CP3 just get into an absolute brawl at center court or something. Mm. Yeah, that's a good a chance pick. he could close the game for you. Yeah, I think I think if uh, Dylan would have you know Ben Simmons and Kawhi and LeBron and all those big players on the floor. I really don't want Luca out there for that. He's not the best defender, even though I'd probably have to have him out there. Will, uh, Willard, probably not. Harden, probably not. Why don't we finish with that? 